welcome to my channel or welcome back. I'm Yosha and I'm your go-to girl for all things real. And if you are new here, I am a lifestyle vlogger from the Atlanta area. I cover real talk, lifestyle, and reviews. I vlog. I'm here to do a thank you for 20,000 subscribers video q a so i got one question from facebook that said what would you tell a person who's trying to start on, on youtube or social media and this is from Quana christine just start a lot of times we get in our own head trying to make things perfect and if you keep doing that you're never going to start so before you could definitely do some research to understand kind of what's out there and get an idea of what you actually want to do but the reality is it's going to take some doing so that you can fine tune your craft and understand where your lane is you got to get started to see some results and be able to audit the stuff you're doing to tailor it so if you never start because you're planning for so long you're never going to be able to get to where you want to go create the social media account upload the first video and be consistent once you start so that you can learn from your own content and learn from others and ebony yvonne said what do you think is the most single most important thing to master for success on youtube that's a really good question i think it depends on what you define as success so for example if success for you is getting monetized and getting paid every month then to master success in that way is to understand how can i create something that is monetizable that i can be consistent with and then be consistent with it i've noticed that my lifestyle content that relates to travel locks and like piercings are my top three that have really afforded me success on my channel and so after being on youtube for over a decade i realized that to be successful i have to be consistent in that type of content to create some evergreen videos within my channel that are going to perform well over time and this is very helpful for me because when i'm not able to retwist my husband's locks when i'm not able to go on vacation or go on a weekend trip and vlog when i'm not able to show you guys a new piercing i have that evergreen content that will still get views months and years later that can help sustain income for my channel even when i'm experimenting with new things that are not paying as well you also have to understand what your viewers want and i think being consistent is the basis of it but also being a bit of advertiser friendly if you are trying to build a part-time income or a full-time income out of being a youtuber now if success for you means that you want to grow an audience and you're not necessarily as worried about the money coming from ads on youtube then you can understand what it is you want to do and what it is your viewers want to do or get from you rather and you find that happy medium and then deliver that with consistency to grow an audience you need to show up for your audience you need to find out where your viewers are and meet them there and make them want to come to your channel and watch i was one who loved live streaming during the pandemic i would go live every week sometimes multiple times a week and i would talk with my viewers prior to getting really busy this summer i was going live every week and i do plan on returning to doing live streaming at least once or twice a month with my viewers so that I can connect with my audience but if your goal is to grow a community then you need to be engaged with your community and you need to talk to your people so they know who you are that is how you define success but going back to your question it really does depend on the person and what they want like I said making money on YouTube your defined success is going to look very different than someone who's just looking to grow a community and you have to understand what's advertiser friendly so that YouTube can push you out and then also what do people that are in your current audience but then people who are not in your current audience want to see what makes people want to come and watch you over the millions of others that are also creating videos right this next question comes from tasha harsh she asked me a few questions so the first one said why do you think some people are successful on youtube and some aren't even if they put in the same amount of effort i would say that is subjective right your journey is your journey so don't compare yourself to others in that if you post your video and you only get a few views the first time 
you are comparing to somebody who's been doing it longer than you or someone else that is also newer but maybe they have other resources that is allowing them to push their content out better don't compare to others and let that deter you from wanting to keep going because there are times where your videos or your posts are not going to do as well sometimes established people say that it ebbs and flows you know we assume that we're putting in the same m amount of effort as someone else now I, I will say in my earlier days of youtubing i would watch content that seemed very similar to mine personalities that seemed um not even as inviting as mine and their videos would be taken off better than mine i just wouldn't understand sometimes i think it's a matter of youtube pushing out different types of people over others different body types different colors of skin different niches sometimes i also think is that when you start off and you're doing a whole bunch of different kinds of videos youtube doesn't know where to place you in their algorithm and i've been a person Person who's experienced that I have a lifestyle channel so y'all get real talk y'all get lifestyle and y'all get reviews some of my reviews have went viral some of my lifestyle content specific to piercings locks and travel have went viral and then when I'm doing every day here's my day in the life as a working mom and a married wife that doesn't do as well and so you will sit there and you watch somebody who is a specific lifestyle channel that only does daily vlogs and family videos and their videos do better they've established a niche and an audience that is specifically looking for that there's so many different things on this channel that it is hard sometimes for YouTube to push that out. And if you're a channel that's doing a lot of different things, sometimes you're not getting pushed because you are doing so many different types of videos on one channel that YouTube doesn't really know how to push you out every time you hit upload. My learnings is that once you get to a certain place, you're going to have people that are going to like you no matter what type of video you do but if you're trying to grow and grow quickly it is sometimes better to niche down to one or two things and keep it at that and if you want to do more then make separate channels for the different things you want to do if you're busy like me and don't have time for that right now then do it the way you're doing it but understand your growth may be a little bit slower than others now outside of that if you are not consistent and you're not uploading shorts and long videos every week then you're not getting pushed out like others because you're not posting enough. The other thing is the likability factor. If you have a good personality and people relate to you and they feel like they can really understand you as a person, then it is easier to grow like that too because people are going to watch whatever you do. And, and her other question was, what is the key to happiness in life? Her YouTube channel is Tasha Rose 2000, so check her out, y'all. I do not have the key to happiness in life, y'all. I will say, like, I believe in God. I am a Christian, and I do feel like if you do not have a good standing with God and you do not, you know, walk by faith, a lot of times you won't have happiness because this world can be really dark and this world can throw a lot of curveballs at you. And when you sit, get those curveballs, and you don't have a higher power that you believe in, even if you're not a believer, if you don't have that sense of things are gonna get better, I can control this situation with what is allotted to me. I can work on what I can control and I can trust the process that it is gonna get better. Then you're always going to be feeling like you're not where you're supposed to be. Things are not good enough. You're going to always be struggling and looking at things half empty versus half full because you don't have that sense of faith that it will get better. I think just having peace and being able to have your health and understanding that every situation happens for a reason and that no matter what happens to you, you are going to be okay on the other side of it. This question is from Nay Lynn. She said, as an amateur, I would love to know more of the best uh, video editing apps, preferably free for beginners. I'm currently trying Canva, but haven't got the hang of it yet. So currently, I use iMovie. If you have an iPhone, I highly recommend iMovie. If you do not have an iPhone and you have a Windows computer, back in the day, I used to use Windows Movie Maker. You asked me for free, so those are my top two freebies. I definitely recommend getting you an iPhone. It doesn't have to be the newest iPhone, but it has to be an iPhone that can have enough space to store your videos if you have an iphone you can edit your videos for free using that iphone now as you get 
more subscribers you start making money from youtube or you have more money from your full-time job that you feel like you can invest i would say the macbook pro makes editing your videos easier we get bogged down in trying to find the best tools and you need to focus on filming the content in good lighting good quality being consistent and getting a video out to your people every week and then the cool editing software will get there in 2024 i did start doing a lot of my thumbnails in canva but in the past i have used photo grid photo grid and canva are the two main that i would use photo grid all of them they want you to pay for the better stuff and so yes they have a lot of cool free templates that you can use but if you invest in canva pro if you invest in um the the apps that you can take those watermarks off you're gonna have a better experience when i didn't have an iphone i also used something called filmora to film long form videos that are vertical or a horizontal landscape like this one but then like a lot of people now are using CapCut, and they do have a free version but again when you start paying for for like the extra add-ons you just get more features when miss in 2015 Miss Nanya, Able Miss Nanya said, Would you ever plan a subscribers trip like Mill Snow is doing March to Cancun? I would absolutely love to do a subscribers trip. I think I would do a cruise first just because I think a carnival cruise is probably the most doable and easy way for us to go and y'all handle y'all payments through carnival yourselves and we plan to get together and have a great time on the ship I would love to start with something like that and maybe the first cruise be out of Florida and go to the Bahamas but I would love to do something like that maybe we could aim to try to, to do it in 2025 I think that would be great the other question I got was what is my most viewed video so let's see I'm about to check right now I got my channel right here on my phone that question came from Kwana as well she asked me a question on Facebook and here on YouTube shout out to you girl so my most popular video is oh my gosh my husband's retwist video, how to retwist locks, very detailed for beginners. For a very, very long time, my most viewed video was how to heal your nose bump overnight. It is now number two on my channel. I don't know when it beat this, but I have 225,000 views and counting on the how to retwist locks for beginners video. And then my second most viewed video is the how to heal your nose bump overnight with 222,000 views and counting. And that video was uploaded eight years ago. The video of me retwisting my husband's locks was uploaded two years ago, maybe almost three at this point. And in my shorts, let's see what the most popular video is. It, so my in shorts, it's a quick little video of me retwisting my husband's locks. That video actually has 384K views. That's a lot. And I'm still getting subscribers because of that. So it's loud and clear. I know people want to see more lock videos. My husband's locks are really, really long. The struggle is real. I know I posted a video of us watching it in the shower. The last time we did it, we actually washed it in the sink again. I put a high chair and I had him lean back like this just because they are so long and it's just easier to scrub like that instead of having to try to stand behind him. I'm shorter than him. It's just a lot. But, um, I'm happy that y'all like the videos. I'm happy that they've been helpful. I am not a loctician. I think that's something that resonates with people is just seeing like an everyday girl like myself retwisting locks. But that concludes the Q&A. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.